My name is Aoife Brady, I'm the Curator of Italian and Spanish Art here at the National Gallery of Ireland and I'm delighted to come to you today from our conservation studio where we are finally preparing to unveil Lavinia Fontana's Queen of Sheba visiting King Solomon. The painting has just undergone a transformative conservation project sponsored by the Bank of America. The results of this project have been really fantastic and through collaborative efforts here at the gallery we've discovered many, many new and interesting ideas and stories about this painting. We once believed the figures in our composition to be the Duke and Duchess of Mantua, Vincenzo Gonzaga and his wife Eleonora de' Medici. We now believe that they are the Duke and Duchess of Ferrara, Alfonso II d'Este and his wife, Margarita Gonzaga. It's a fantastic story and really gives a wonderful insight into the culture and life of 16th century Italy. The marriage between Alfonso and Margarita was a late one for Alfonso. It was his third marriage and his final chance to produce an heir for Ferrara's court. And there are many, many references in the painting to love and desire and this urge to have an heir that were previously obscured through discoloured varnish and old restorations, including this wonderful tiny, tiny figure of Eros, the god of love, on the crown of the Queen of Sheba. And we have some other really interesting allusions to love, fertility, reproduction, not least this little ermine head who would have been worn hanging from the belt of a lady in the 16th century as a sort of fertility charm. And we think that all of these things, these little details, relate to the real desire to have a child and an heir. We know very, very little about the early provenance of this painting. We're not entirely sure why Fontana painted it or where it ended up after she completed the composition. And in fact, there are very, very few references to it for decades um, after it was created. We now believe through a combination of technical research and art historical research that this painting likely never left Fontana's studio and perhaps never even made it to its original commissioner. We've also found a wonderful date on the composition, hidden in a small ornate clock held by one of the ladies in waiting. And that dates this to 1599 which gives us probably a completion date for the painting. And it was at a time when Alfonso II, the Duke of Ferrara, had actually passed away. So we think that when Alfonso d'Este passed away, that this painting was left languishing in Fontana's studio. The court of Ferrara was broke and collapsed. And this painting probably was the subject of considerable experimentation in the artist's workshop in the years that followed before she left for Rome in the early 1600s. It maybe then was assimilated into a local collection, but was defunct as a celebration of a court that no longer existed. And so through our collaborative efforts in conservation and art historical research, we have established a theory for the origins of this mysterious and fantastic painting.